This video assumes that you have watched the previous four minute video on B plus trees, which introduced B plus tree structure and the lookup operation. This video describes the basic operation of insertion into B plus trees. Let's very quickly demonstrate a simple lookup though, particularly to illustrate a convention that I'm going to be assuming. Notice that when I look up 24 in this tree, 24 is equal to an existing key. So I take the link to the right of this existing key. At the bottom of the slide, I give the general convention for directing search at a node when the value I'm looking up equals an existing key. You might pause the video to make sure you understand this convention. Now let's get back to insert. Consider inserting 28 plus its associated information, again signified by the asterisk. First we locate where 28 would go using the lookup procedure and in this case we find that there is room at the appropriate leaf. So we insert 28 there so as to maintain the sorted order. Now let's insert 20. Think for a moment about where you think it belongs. 20 belongs in the left middle leaf as indicated, but that leaf is filled, so what do we do? To make room, we are going to split the leaf into two leaves and distribute the items on the original leaf across the two leaves. Actually, when we split, we will reuse the current leaf, highlighted in blue, and dynamically allocate a new leaf, highlighted in red. Then we will redistribute the keys of the original leaf, as shown here. An important question arises. How do we update the pointers in the tree as a result of splitting an existing leaf? If we consider all the values of the original leaf, highlighted in blue in the top tree, together with the new value of 20 that we're inserting, 19 will be the middle value of this set of five values. On the bottom tree, you'll see that we place all keys less than 19 on the left leaf, and all keys greater than or equal to 19 on the right leaf. We are then going to pass 19 up because we need to add it to the root so we can properly navigate the tree in the future. The top figure shows that I passed 19 up together with two pointers, one to the blue and one to the red leaf. I've also color coded two other pointers, green and purple, to the right. This top figure shows that there is room for 19 at the root. So as shown in the bottom figure, I make 19 a new key of the root and update the root's pointers accordingly. Now I am done with the insertion of 20 which caused all this activity. Now let's insert an 8, which we'd like to place in the leftmost leaf, but that leaf is full. 5 is the middle value of those that are at the leaf plus the new key that we are going to insert. So we're going to split around the 5 and copy the 5 up. Pause the video if you want to take a moment to visualize the next step of this insertion. The bottom figure shows that we split the original leaf, reusing it, as well as dynamically allocating space for a new node. We copy the 5 up, but in this case there is no space at the root. The solution is to split the root as shown by the bottom figure. 19 is the middle value, so we use that value to move up. But note that rather than copying the 19 up and keeping a copy of 19 at the right node in red, we have moved the 19 up. In general, when you split a leaf, as we had seen previously, we copied the middle value up. In contrast, when we split an internal node, any internal node, including the root, we move the middle key up. Why is that? It's because leaves store information associated with their respective keys so a copy of all key values have to remain there along with the information. In contrast, when we split on an internal node, there is no associated information, so we have no need to redundantly store the key there. We just move it up in order that we can navigate the tree correctly in the future. This is the tree after inserting an 8. Notice that we have created a new root and updated pointers accordingly. Pause the video to make sure you understand the new structure. Also look up 19, which has been passed up twice in this running example, and verify that it will be found at a leaf where you expect it to be found. Also try to update this tree by inserting 10 followed by 37, and restart the video when you think you have an answer. Go ahead and pause now. 
Is this the tree you ended up with? Pause if you need to reflect on it. Next, insert another 8 into the tree. There is already an 8 in the tree, but B-plus trees can store duplicate key values. Remember, though, that with each key value, there will be associated information. And even if the key values themselves are the same, the information associated with each duplicate key will be different. To give you just a peek ahead, suppose the keys in this tree represented ISBNs. And in a table of purchases of books by customers, we would expect the same ISBNs, like 8, would appear many times. But in each case, they would be associated with different purchase records for different customers. In any case, pause the video and try to show the tree that results from inserting another 8. There is nothing tricky because of the duplicate in this case, though duplicates in general can complicate insertion. Go ahead and pause now. This is the tree you should have obtained. Pause if you need to reflect on it. Here's another insertion exercise. On the next slide, you will see the tree after inserting 27, and the slide after that shows the result of inserting the subsequent 52. Pause as necessary, including now. The bottom tree is the result after inserting 27. Now try 52 if you haven't already. Pause as necessary, including now. The tree at the bottom is the result of inserting 52. Reflect on it if you need to. We'll switch topics modestly in the very next slide. In addition to the insertion strategies we've already discussed, insertions can often be done in a lazy fashion, sometimes known as redistribution. This slide shows the process of inserting a key and sliding values around and updating pointers as necessary to accommodate the addition of 27. Go ahead and reflect on it. Here's another example of redistribution of keys when inserting a 52. In either of these past two examples, have we done any node splitting and the costly dynamic allocation of memory associated with splitting? So redistribution can be much faster when it works. If you were to actually implement a DBMS, you would likely develop and or reuse some systematic algorithm for redistribution. But we won't develop such an algorithm here, which is why I have a perhaps question mark. I've simply shown you some ad hoc examples. Just know that redistribution exists and it is useful. There is much we haven't talked about in regards to B plus trees, most notably how to delete an item from a B plus tree. You can probably find other videos online for that. Also, we only discussed insertion of one element at a time. If you had a lot of data, however, to begin with, a DBMS would not insert them all individually and in sequence but rather a specialized procedure for bulk loading the tree, creating it all at once, if you will, would be used. Also, we haven't talked about systematic treatment of duplicates, but we won't need to for the subsequent work that we're going to do. Rather, I want to talk next about B-plus trees as indexes into database tables, which I think gets into some very interesting, even artistic territory.